I wouldn't want to be taurine right now. Talk about bad publicity. Taurine is an amino acid, a molecule that we produce as well as consume. And although last year and the year before was the year of taurine with multiple studies coming out indicating it being a molecule of youth, this year it's taken its lumps. One study linked it to cancer, which we already covered, and a new study calls into question whether taurine really is a molecule of use. This one. I have to admit, they provide convincing evidence that we'll get into, and even so, we can mount a pro-taurine resistance based in science. Here's the conundrum, a huge, extremely influential study released a few years ago that showed all kinds of ways that taurine is linked to reversing and improving symptoms of aging. They showed it across multiple animal models, including some closer to humans, monkeys. Beyond that, they had evidence taurine declines precipitously with age in humans. We can see that here. On the vertical axis, we have the blood taurine levels. On the horizontal axis, we have age. And the line going through the data indicates the trend of the data. And clearly, it drops significantly from birth. So, based on this association, along with a mountain of data on supplementing taurine, showing life extension effects, improvements in multiple organ systems from bone, muscle, brain, and more, it was perfectly reasonable to assume that taurine was a molecule that we needed to replace as we'd likely become deficient over time. So keep that association in mind. As we age, taurine levels decline. Unfortunately, this new study provides direct convincing evidence that is not true. In fact, not only is it not true, but it may actually be the opposite. What do I mean? If we pop open this study, the researchers took blood samples from three groups of people between ages 26 to 100. If we pop open that data, we again see taurine levels on the vertical axis and age on the horizontal. You'll immediately notice that we don't see that precipitous drop that we did in the previous influential taurine study. The left pink graph is women and the right blue graph is men. In fact, if you squint, you see that taurine levels rise over the lifespan. In fact, the same was true of monkeys and mice. Here's the monkey data you can see a, a pretty noticeable curve upwards in the later years, directly in opposition of what we knew before. So what's going on here? Did the previous researchers deceive us or was it an error that was made? Well, they didn't deceive us, nor did they make an error, at least not experimental error. This initial study measured taurine in a cross-sectional format. That means that they measured a person at one time point in their life, let's say 30 years old, and they measured another person at one point in their life, say 64 years old, and then they compared. That's what led to these results. Now, that seems pretty reasonable, and you'd expect to detect a real association. However, a better way to go about things is longitudinally, as in you measure a person at 30, and then you measure the same person at 40, and then 50, and so on. That way you're controlling, naturally, for many more factors like genetics, life circumstances, living location, potentially diet, and so on. That's the method that this new study did it. So this is a prime example of knowing the limitations of study design. Just when we think that one type of study design is sufficient to answer a question, a better study design indicates otherwise. That means the new study is probably correct. Taurine does not decline with age. But does that then mean that taurine doesn't matter? Well, not quite. From the same study, if we look at the relationship between serum taurine and leg strength, the taurine levels are on the vertical axis and the increase in leg strength measured as knee strength is on the horizontal. In women, there's an association with greater blood taurine levels being associated with better leg strength. So there's some indication that taurine is still related to important health metrics. But if we look at something like, I don't know, grip strength, we no longer see an association. So it is specific to the experiment. There's a lot of these kinds of nuances, like how age affects these muscle data and the taurine levels in the organs and some additional data on weight and taurine. I'll be covering that in the full analysis included for the Physionic Insiders. If you're interested in learning all that there is, along with discussing in live sessions with me, getting a private podcast access and much more, check out the Physionic Insiders. It's linked in the description box. Now, while there might be some signals that taurine is still important, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty distrustful 
of these uh, simple associative data, especially when we're getting mixed results. Fortunately, when discussing metrics like strength, guess what? We don't even need to rely on associative data. We can skip it entirely and go straight to the questions like, if I consume taurine, will I see improvements in muscle performance, which are easily answered by intervention studies, or as some people like to shout, <coughs> Lane Norton, randomized control trials. So taking a cursory peek at a study on taurine, if we pop open muscle strength results compared against a group not consuming taurine, we can see that taurine indicates benefit as taurine condition maintains muscle strength while the non-taurine placebo group does not. Clearly, there's a benefit. This is further corroborated in systematic reviews as well, although not all studies indicate benefit. Beyond muscle strength and performance, we've covered several studies directly implicating taurine in improving a variety of conditions like metabolic syndrome. So to say that taurine is useless now simply because it doesn't decrease with age just doesn't speak to the actual cause and effect studies that were performed. None of those care about your associative taurine levels. All they show is that from multiple groups of people, taurine supplementation provides mild to moderate benefits, at least on the outcomes that we briefly discussed. So the takeaway here is, one, that blood taurine levels may not decline with age as we initially thought. Two, this reality does not mean that taurine is not beneficial when supplemented, at least based on the current intervention study literature. In fact, let's imagine that you don't believe me. What if I tried to convince you with some more direct evidence on taurine's use? right here.